good practice and uh, they're in a good frame of mind. Uh, and so I think you know what our kids are excited about is you know trying to trying to continue to to uh, strive to reach their potential and find out where that potential is, and uh, that's what you want out of them. So it's been a good day so far. We got a little more meetings this morning, and then I expect them to come out here tomorrow and even have a better day. But uh, encouraged just by the way they came out today and were focused and upbeat and locked in. It was, it was a good day. So. Edward, what do you got for me? Uh, freshman playing time. Uh, freshman playing time. Uh, how are you kind of managing all that with, with some of the guys being kind of under all, under all Americans, Army all Americans and stuff, and then coming in here? That doesn't matter to us. What matters is what they do, you know, in between these fences and on the field on Saturday. And, uh, and our number one objective is to create, well, our number one objective is to win football games, obviously. Uh, and we're going to put the guys on the field each week that we think can help us win football games. Uh, I think every week you're going to see different combinations. You're going to probably see different amounts of playing time. Uh, you know, some of those young guys, uh, I think, were a little bit stunned that they didn't get in the game Saturday. But, you know, uh, we... We played who we thought at the moment was going to help us win, you know, and I think it's going to be different every week. Uh, but we're very pleased with these kids, uh, the way they're coming along, their attitude, their work ethic. You know, I've had to have a talk, conversation with a few of them, just explain to them that, you know, the fact that you didn't get the play time on Saturday that maybe you got versus Nevada isn't necessarily a reflection of how we feel about you. It's not a reflection about your work ethic. Uh, it's just a reflection of the way the game went. You know, every game's different, and they have to always be ready. They always have to be prepared to, to go in there and compete. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's hard for some of them. It's an adjustment. You know, you said it. These Under Armour All-Americans, these Parade All-Americans, these four- and five-star recruits that have never sat on the bench, and then they're sitting on the bench. What's important that these guys start to realize is that it's always going to be about the team first. It's not always an easy lesson to learn, but they're learning it. They are learning it. Tahan, one of the guys you had to have that conversation with? Tahan and I had a, had, a, had a conversation yesterday, a very positive conversation. You know, he's a competitive kid. He comes out here every day and works his tail off. You know, Twitter, as we know, is the world we live in right now. You know, and for me to ask these kids not to, to use Twitter would be ignorant, I think. But to use it responsibly, I think, is, is okay for me to ask them to do. And I think that, you know, sometimes we become very reactionary. Heck, you guys know I'm one of the most reactionary people around. So I think that just the fact that I have that experience helps me deal with these kids that sometimes react. Uh, and they don't need to put everything out there. But you know what? Sometimes you've got to go through things to learn. And, and that's what college is about. It's about learning. And it's not just in the classroom. It's off the field. It's on the field. It's all around. And they're learning. And, he didn't mean anything malicious by it. He's a great kid. He's a good-natured kid. He just he's feeling a little frustration. And uh, hey, it is what it is. No harm, no foul. How much are you got? Is that gone? No, I was going to say, you're not expecting us to be responsible with Twitter, are you? Just no, you point? guys can post whatever you want, whatever you want. But, there are, you know, I think it's a lesson to be learned. You know, we, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a form to be heard, but you just got to make sure that you're, you're presenting the right message at all times. And, you know, it's so easy to type something out, push send, and you never get it back. It's hard lessons to learn. But, uh, you know, I, I think that I know these guys well enough to know when someone's being malicious. Uh, someone's being selfish, or someone's just, you know, simply being emotional or making a mistake, you know, and, and like I said, with, with regards to Tahan, I mean, it wasn't five minutes after he posted that that he texted me and said, Coach, I just posted this, I want you to know what I meant, and we had a great conversation. Like I said, he's a really fine young man, I'm really glad he's here. How much do you have to police that at all, or, or tell, remind them that they have to watch what they're saying? Daily. That, yeah? <laughs> Daily. That's my responsibility. And it's not just Twitter, it's Facebook, it's it's being out in the community and representing UCLA. You know, like I said, there's, there's, they're kids still, some of them. They're young adults. They're not, I know some people don't like when I call them kids. They're young adults. They're still maturing. There's still a lot of lessons to be learned. This is college. Mm -hmm. You know, they're still in the educational process. So. Uh, you know, I, I don't mind it. I, uh, I think it's a real important part of my job, and, and we're, we're on them. <laughs> you know, I have kids the same. I have a kid his age, mm -hmm. okay? Exactly the same age, a freshman in college. So I know what's going on in those. Well, I think I know what's going on in their minds. <laughs> Maybe I don't. So. How's the uh, ego management of kids this age as opposed to the NFL? It's easier. It's easier. You know, you got to do a little de-recruiting sometimes, uh, but it's easier. 
you know, they're more impressionable. Uh, we had a great session this morning, and it just kind of ha- it was just it just happened uh, randomly. But we talked about Bill Russell this morning, and uh, I showed him a video about Bill Russell. And I've gotten to know Bill Russell really well through the years, and uh, in my opinion, the greatest winner in the history of team sports. Played 21 years of, prof- of organized basketball and won 18 championships. He was the only player uh, in the history to to win a national championship, a world championship, and an Olympic gold medal in the same calendar year. And yet, in talking to him over the last five or six years that I've gotten to know him, and I've written down all these different quotes he's told me or I've read, everything for him was about team. His ego was about the team winning. And it just seemed like this morning, and, and I was planning to talk about it anyway, it was kind of the right message for some of those young guys, you know, to realize that it's about the team. And uh, it's not always easy for these kids that have always been superstars, but they're getting it. They're, they're truly, truly getting it. And it's fun to watch them get it. Priest didn't really get much time either on, on Saturday. What's his development been like? I know he was hurt he's, a little yeah, bit. He's hurt. And our, you know, our corners are playing well. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you, you can make the argument that, uh, you know, Fabian got beat on that touchdown on the on the pressure, but he's right there. Uh, Brandon got beat on the slant and go. We had Brandon in there because we wanted a taller guy. You know, Priest hasn't he hadn't played yet. Mm-hmm. He didn't play in the first game because of the shoulder. So uh, we we kind of wanted to get him in on specials. He played quite a bit. He did a good job on the mm-hmm. kickoff team. Uh, you know, I expect as the year goes on, because he's a talented kid, and he gets himself in better shape. Remember, he didn't have the benefit of having the offseason work here at UCLA that some of these other guys did, so he was a little bit behind just in his conditioning. But he's a hardworking kid. He's conscientious. He wants to be a great player. He's a good teammate. And you'll see more and more of Priest Willis. Mm-hmm. Yesterday you talked about the, the concern of an emotional hangover after everything that this team has been through. Are you able to gauge that through practice today, how the guys are doing? Yeah, I already talked about that. So we, we, we addressed that, and it was, we're, we're right on track. Yeah, that was, I opened this whole thing. With the secondary, do you feel like they've, I know it's only been two games, but have they proven something at all in, in terms of, you know, that was some a spot you were pretty worried about before the season. Have they kind of calmed those worries at all, or is it too yeah. early to say? No, they have. You know, anytime you go out and play and get that experience, I think it's going to build your confidence, and they've actually played fairly well. Um, and, and like I said, you know, we'll continue to work some of those young guys into the rotation, but... Uh, you know, I've been impressed with, with Anthony Jefferson spe- specifically, mm-hmm. the way he's played, you know, the way he's tackled and managed things back there, you know, a guy that moved from corner to safety. And, uh, you know, I think Ish has played well. Mm-hmm. Randall's been solid. Fabian is continuing to get better. Mm-hmm. They're going to have their setbacks at times because they are young and, you know, they don't have a lot of experience. But I think we're making real progress back there. Now, you know, when we get up against a real live passing team, a team that you know, drops back and slings it, you know, 60 times a game or 50 times a game, then then we'll really find out where we are. You got anybody like that on your schedule? Um, Cal? I, guess. I know that we got New Mexico State this week, and then I know we got. You don't have We got a buy, right? We got a buy, yeah. yeah. You said you've known Miles Jackson since he was about 12 years old. Yeah. What did you see from him early on, and how much have you seen him throughout? Oh man! First time I saw Miles, he uh, his his little brother Jalen and my son Ryder played football together uh, through junior football league. And uh, I remember when they showed up from Georgia, and Miles showed up to practice up at this place called Wilberton. Had on his uh, shower shoes, white socks, gray sweats, t-shirt. I said, "How old is that kid?" And he said, "He's like 12," and he was just you know, already jacked up. And just a really good kid. He's got you know his mom. Uh, Lasagna is a good friend of mine and my wife's and we've known her forever and I've just seen him grow into a really mature, serious, conscientious young man. You know, he's, he, for a true freshman, is uh, well ahead of the curve in terms of all of those aspects and then the physical part, I think it's pretty obvious you know, when we watch him play. He never gets tired, he's quick as a cat, he can run, he can jump, he can anticipate, he's got really good football awareness. And, uh, and he comes out here and he's a hard worker, you know, and he seems to just get better every single day. And that's when I saw it he was, when he was young. You know, he's always got better. And he was a running back back then. Nobody wanted to tackle Miles Jack, and, you know, when he was playing for the Bellevue Wolverines. I promise you that. Well, you said he was uh, going to play offense down the line. Do you see that happening this season? Or? Mm-hmm. At some point. Not yet. Uh, you know, Right now, we just got to let him settle in a bit. Because he's really playing two spots right now on defense. He's playing outside linebacker, and then he plays the dime position in our nickel and dime defense. So uh, he's essentially playing inside and outside linebacker. 
And I think right now what's best for us to do is let him concentrate on those things. Plus the way our running backs are playing, you know, I think that Jordan's playing well and, and uh, Paul's playing well and, and, uh, and Steven's playing well. Malcolm's coming in and doing some really good things. It's not like we necessarily need to put him over there right now.